Hi, my name is Hendrik from WP Munich and today we're going to talk about the new Gutenberg editor. If you want to know how the Gutenberg editor looks like and why it's considered to be the next big thing in the WordPress ecosystem, stay tuned. So what is the Gutenberg editor? The project itself aims at nothing less than replacing the tiny MC or the YZWAG editor we currently have in the WordPress backend. This is done to reduce the amount of complexity the tiny MC often introduces. Matt Marlenweg has stated at WordCamp Europe that the Gutenberg editor should not be seen as something to keep up with editors like Wix or Medium or Squarespace, but to leapfrog those systems and those concepts and uh, be the next big thing of, of editing content. So it is really interesting what the Gutenberg team has come up with in terms of usability. So how can you get the Gutenberg editor? Installation itself is really easy. We have here a fresh install of WordPress with uh, the current 2017 theme. And to install the Gutenberg editor, you have to go into your plugin settings, click Add New, and just add the Gutenberg editor as a standard plugin. Gutenberg, look for that. And then we see the big G, the Gutenberg editor, and it sells, it's even says, warning, this is beta software, do not run on real sites. So if you want to tr take the Gutenberg editor for a test run, go install that plugin, but it is probably kind of early to, to take it on a live site. So let's install the plugin. It takes a bit to install. Activate it. And then we have several ways of interacting with the Gutenberg editor. As a start, we have a new menu item down at the admin menu where we can do a new post or a demo. And then in our posts overview, we have the Gutenberg option available where we can edit every post available in the Gutenberg editor, but that doesn't make very much sense yet because you will see that in a second. The major news thing, new thing with the Gutenberg editor is that everything is a block. So we have here our title block. Uh, what shall we call this uh, post? Let's call that an, an introduction to Gutenberg. And uh, then let's take some filler text and try to write a story. All right, so much so, uh, yeah, that is pretty much how we know it from TinyMC. We can do uh, bold things, italic things. But then let's start doing things different. Let's, let's shorten this down for the sake of being able to see everything. Let's add a new block. There we have a list of blocks available. And here we see uh, one first bug. Let, let's take that interface from somewhere else. Here we have uh, the same interface. There we have some common blocks, a freeform text, where you can just enter text, a heading, that's just what it says, a heading where I can say, all right, go h1 to h6, a heading, let's insert something else, lists, text, images, quotes, gallery. Uh, we pretty much know that from the tiny MC pull quotes. We don't know the pull quote yet. That is basically a fancy different quote with the caption. We haven't had that in tiny MC uh, with the default installation. There are tons of plugins, of course, but we haven't had that yet with the default installation. So let's say something smart. Um, something smart awesome right caption by me but now let's take a look at the really really interesting blocks that we have here for instance the table block we haven't had a default table in tiny mc up until now like 
with Gutenberg, we starting to get tables as a default feature of WordPress, which is kind of awesome, unless you add them with code. Um, so here we can do some tables like uh, cell one, cell two, whatever. We have an awesome button where we can link to uh, awesome pages like http www.wp.com. And then I think I should be able to write some text, but nope. But well, that is why it's still in the beta. And then we can embed widgets. So blocks can be dynamic don't have to be dynamic, but due to the fact that this editor is completely written in React, like a JavaScript framework, and communicates with the backend, I think through the REST API, uh, we can do some pretty fancy stuff like um, displaying the latest posts, or displaying stuff from another category, or uh, displaying related posts, or uh, your imagination is the border. Basically, anything you can do in a widget, you can actually do in a block uh, in Gutenberg. Then we have our standard embeds. Um, I have no idea why they did such uh, embed gallery instead of just saying, all right, this is O embed, just paste in there, whatever works, works. And I, I kind of find this unintuitive, but hey, that's why it's beta. So let's, let's take a YouTube URL and uh, paste the URL and the video there. Now we have an awesome video, write a ca caption, uh, Matt talking about cool stuff, awesome caption. All right, now we have some horribly awful content, but well, I can do it whatever uh, with it what I want. For example, here I can um, no, here I can change the layout of the actual embed to make that full width, not so much full width, right align, left align, center, center. So that is pretty awesome. So here we, that's about it for the edit screen. Many of the markup option have like settings to the left, like uh, the text um, block has some settings to the right. And uh, like you can add a drop cap, which makes the first letter big, which is pretty awesome. Headings have nothing, pull quotes have nothing, tables have nothing yet. And if you um, have no block selected, you have your standard post settings to the right. All right, so much for the Gutenberg editor itself. Now let's go for the fact that uh, you can't use Gutenberg in life yet and you shouldn't. Um, so this is the notice that you shouldn't use in live. Keep in mind this plugin is a beta version and will not display correctly on your theme. Let's see how it looks like. Uh, preview, no I can't. Go to post. There it is, an introduction to Gutenberg. Let's view that on the front end. Doesn't look too bad. There was supposed to be a button somewhere, but well, doesn't look, doesn't really, really look too bad. So the standard um, CSS markup of many themes should be somewhat compatible, but well, you know how it is. It isn't, it, you will always find an edge case. So a second thing why the Gutenberg editor isn't really production ready is uh, when you jump into the text, you see, all right, it basically does everything in a freeform text at the moment. So um, when you start working with Gutenberg and if you want to uh, touch up your current content, you will have to redo a lot of it. There will be a lot of copy pasting and that will be a pain in the ass, to be honest. Um, but we'll see what the Gutenberg team will come up with. So that 
is is it for the overview over the Gutenberg editor? Um, we've seen a lot of feedback after Matt Malawak introduced the Gutenberg editor to the masses on WordCamp Europe uh, the last weekend. And for example, Yoast is kind of worried about accessibility. Um, I kind of share his um, worries because the tiny MCE has enjoyed a lot of work to make that thing accessible and somewhat easy to use. It is still horrible oftentimes, but it is very accessible to people with handicaps. And that is why Yoast has, uh, I think, freed a whole employee who is uh, now working on this project in terms of accessibility and making that more access accessible. So thank you for that. Otherwise, this editor introduces some new concepts that will profoundly change the way a WordPress is structured. So right now we have a lot of differing concepts in terms of editing content. Like we have the tiny MC, then we have widgets, which is a totally different concept. Like we have an editor for the main content and then we have an editor for the side content and oftentimes the user asks why is that a separate thing why can't i just do it everything in the editor and mostly they are right like four or five years ago uh, we were all asking why the hell would you do with that and then uh, competitors like wix or squarespace, squarespace came and showed that it is actually quite decent to work like that. So in the future, we will see a massive reduction in complexity um, in WordPress because not only the stuff in your content will become blocks, basically everything will become a block. Um, the stuff in the sidebar will be maintained as blocks. Um, the stuff in the footer will be maintained as blocks. Everything will be a block. And I really look forward to the future. So, what do you what do you think about the Gutenberg editor? Do you like it? Uh, have you worked with it already? What are your concerns? Drop us a comment in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, give us a like. If you want to know more and, and watch more of these videos, hit subscribe. And thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.